Friends, I recently asked a man in, I'd say he was in his 60s, what's the goal of your life? What's life for? And he answered without really thinking, well, to achieve as much as I can. He was a man who uh, imagined that his dying was a long way off. Um, and that so his, the goal of life at this point was to achieve. But once people know that they are dying, uh, goals can often change to regrets, from goals to regrets. A palliative care nurse in Australia uh, has uh, recently summed up her conversations uh, with people in their last weeks of life. One common regret that they have is this. I spent too much time trying to achieve something and not enough time getting to know the people who were most important to me. That's a big shift in attitude, isn't it? From my goal in life is to achieve to I didn't get to know the people who are most important. Well, friends, regrets can give us a clue to one of the great mysteries of life, can't they? And that great mystery is this question, what is life for? What is life for? So many people feel that they've missed the point. That's often because they didn't get to know the people that were most important. For so many people, the point of life is to get to know the people who are most important. Well, friends, can I tell you, that is the point of life, to get to know someone, the one who is the most important. Getting to know him is the point of life. Getting to know him is the only way to life. That person is Jesus. So why don't we hear about what the Bible says about him? I'm going to be reading from uh, the Gospel of John, from chapter 1, uh, reading from verses 1 to 18. I'll be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him, and apart from him not one thing was created that has been created. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, and yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of natural descent, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him and exclaimed, This was the one of whom I said, The one is coming after me, ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. Indeed, we have all received grace upon grace from his fullness, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the one and only Son, who is himself God, is at the Father's side. He has revealed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to pray. Father, you have spoken to us in your word through John. Father, would you now apply that word to our hearts? Would you give me words that are faithful? Uh, would you apply these things to me, uh, to all listening? by your Holy Spirit, that we might see Jesus for who he is, recognise him, believe in him and have life in him. We pray in his name. Amen. Friends, our reading just then was not an easy one, was it? So I'm going to try and draw out just two things. One, that Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And two, why that matters for our life. Jesus is God, why does it matter? Well, it's 2,000 years ago, and John is in his late teens. 
He and his brother work in their dad's seafood business. One day a man from out of town lands them both in this new kind of apprenticeship. They spend three years under his training and then he sends them out. Half a century later, John sits down to try and capture in words the significance of those three short years. You see, everything that man had done in that time has driven John to an inevitable conclusion that the man, Jesus, who he'd seen teach and heal and drive away evil spirits and suffer and die and rise from the dead, that man was no less than God in the flesh. What John realises about Jesus is he knew him and so he knew God. So the goal of John's book is to show us that the man, Jesus, is truly and fully God and why that's a matter of life and death for you. Now, that's a pretty big construction project, isn't it? And so John just starts brick by brick. And his first brick is this simple line. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. But this first brick doesn't actually mention Jesus. Well, it's because he's only given that name, Jesus, when he arrives as a human baby. But John's book about Jesus starts at a time he calls the beginning. And in this beginning, we hear about something called the Word. And the beginning John's talking about is actually the beginning of the universe itself. And we know that because John's beginning is exactly the same as the beginning of the Genesis account, which starts, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Well, see, John's saying in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth was <coughs> was the word. Or well, you could say the word was there. In the original language, um, that's written in, as if to say the word was there and had been in an ongoing, uh, a continuing way. So it means that when God created all things, the word was already there. So that's John's first brick. In the beginning was the Word. Now, I'm imagining a few questions might pop up here. If God created all things, then how can there be something else there before he created those things? Where did this Word come from? Now, remember that John starts by quoting Genesis, and so he's already given us a bit of a hint. See, in Genesis, at the very beginning, what does God do? Well, he creates, doesn't he? And how does he create? Well, he speaks. Then God said, let there be light. Then God said, then God said. He speaks his word and things happen. He creates by his word. He creates through his word. His word is his means of creating. He wants to create a world and he does it by his word. God's word, it shows what's on his mind. It, 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 it reveals what's in his heart, doesn't it? It reveals his intentions. It uncovers his desires. With his word, God goes public. His word is his way of expressing himself to the world. His word is how he makes himself known. Now, the Bible then keeps reminding us that God continues to relate to his creation by his word. Uh, listen to Psalm 33. The heavens were made by the word of the Lord and all the stars by the breath of his mouth. And Psalm 107, he sent his word and healed them. He rescued them from their traps. Or Isaiah 55, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please and will prosper in what I send it to do. So can you see how God's word is something that expresses what's in God's heart? By his word, he makes himself known. His word is described here as being sent out from within himself into the world. It's with him, but he sends it out. It's not something separate to him, is it? It's his word. So to the writers of the Old Testament, God's word is himself expressed. God's word is how he makes himself known. So back in our passage... John tells us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. 
So he's not saying actually something entirely new or left field here, is he? It's not a new idea. God's word has always been with him. It's always been his way of making himself known. So John can say in verse 1, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. So there's our second brick. So I hope you can see how that makes sense. The word was with God. See, if the word was there in the beginning, before the creation, the word must have been with God. But here in John, God is showing us something that is new, that his people have not known before. John is about to really rock the boat. Have a look there in verse 2. He was with God there in the beginning. Sorry, he was with God in the beginning. He was with God. He was with God. The word is actually a person, a real living person. He's not a Star Wars kind of force or an idea like karma or some kind of poetic uh, personification of God's words. No, he's a real person who has related with the world since the beginning. And of course, we find out in just a few verses here that that person is Jesus. So here's another brick. And isn't it a doozy? The word is a person. He was with God in the beginning. The word who was with God in the beginning is himself a person. So that's our third brick. But you can see I've skipped something, haven't I? I've laid down three bricks already and I've got one out of price already. So we need to back up a little. What was that very important thing that I missed in John's sentence here? Let's just try that again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was not only with God, but the Word was God. He was with God, so the Word and God are distinct somehow. But the Word was God, so they're closely identified with each other. That's confusing, isn't it? How can someone be with God and also be God? Well, this is our God speaking to us through John, so we believe it. But let's see if we can take a moment to try and understand how John can say that. In fact, why John must say that. Well, here's the first reason that God, God sorry, John, oh God, can say the word was both with God and was God. John's just said, in the beginning was the word. And that's before anything was created. And so before anything create was created, there was only God, right? We could say that God is one kind of thing that exists. He's the creator. And we could say that there's another kind of thing that exists. That's the things he created. So everything is either one kind or the other. <coughs> you are either the creator or you're created. So if you exist before anything is created... You must be the creator. We can peek ahead at the next verse just to make sure. Verse 3, all things were created through him. That's the word. And apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. So if the word existed with God before the creation, the word must somehow be God. Well, here's another reason that John can say the word was both with God and was God. And John is so careful how he writes this sentence. And there's a way that he's actually put it in his own language, which is a little bit hidden in English. So the way he writes God when he says the word was with God is slightly different to the way he writes God when he says the word was God. Now, the way he's organised his sentence means you can't just swap those terms around. This is what I mean. God, sorry, John says the word was with God. But that does not also mean God was, sorry, I'll start again. John says the word was God. But that doesn't also mean God was the word. You can't swap them around. This is what he means. 
The Word was God, but God is more than just the Word. John is definitely saying that the Word was God, but he's also saying that the Word is not the only one who is God. I'll say that again. John is very careful to say that the Word is God, but, he is, but he's also saying that the Word is not the only one who is God. The Word is God, but he's not the only one who is God. And this is the clear teaching of Jesus throughout John's book and in others. Jesus, the Word, is not the only one who is God. And we go on to discover that God is Father, Son, that's Jesus, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, what we call the Trinity. Now here's one way that uh, Jesus puts it in from John 14. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and that'll be enough for us. Jesus replied, Philip, I've been with you all this time and still you do not know me? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Did you hear that? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. The Father and the Son, that's the word, are distinct. Yet if you have seen one, you have seen the other. They are distinct and yet equal. It's another way of saying that the word was with God, distinct, and the word was God, equal. So that's our fourth and last brick laid down, and the word was God. Now John then goes on to lay more and more bricks to build up this picture of Jesus. He unfolds the three years he and the other apostles spent living day to day with a man who looked like every other man. And yet in this one sentence, John claims that this same man, truly man, is no less than God himself. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Well, so what? What's the point of all this? It's helpful when someone tells you they're about to make their point, isn't it? Here's the reason I'm telling you this. Well, John is going to spend a lot of time and effort trying to convince us that God became a human in the man Jesus. But even if that is true, so what? What difference does it make? Jesus is God, but what's your point, John? Well, I think he's got two points. Let's take them one at a time. His first point, um, it's my point 6a on the outline, that if Jesus is God, then if you know Jesus, you know God. I'm going to skip right to the end of our passage now. Verse 18. No one has ever seen God, the one and only Son, who is himself God, is at the Father's side. He has revealed him. Quite simply, the way God has shown himself to the world is in his word, the man Jesus. Jesus is how he makes himself known. In the man Jesus, we can look God in the face. Thousands did. John himself joked with God. He ate with God. He was close friends with God. John rested on the, his head on the chest of God. He smelled God's sweat. He knew the thoughts of God. How do you know the thoughts of God? Do you remember? God expresses himself by his word, doesn't he? And God, John tells us, the word became flesh. So what Jesus says about something, God says. What Jesus feels about something, God feels. What I love about Jesus is if we know him, we know God. Well, that's a pretty big deal, isn't it? That we can know God. But John's not finished. 
He still wants us to convince you why that's a matter of life and death. See, he still imagines someone saying, oh, well, we can know God, can we? So, reader, he answers, we're talking about your life and death. Your life depends on it. So as he, as he, in the closing paragraphs of his book, he says, I've written my book so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Friends, your creator is saying to you, if you understand who Jesus is and believe, you can have life. You can have life to the full here, life to the full into eternity. Listen again to how Jesus puts it. Now, Jesus here, when he says this, he knows he's about to die the next day and he's praying. He's God the Son praying to God the Father. He says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. See, the only way to have life is to know God. And the only way to know God is to know Jesus. What I love about Jesus is he is God. If we know him, we know God. If we know God, we have life. If we know Jesus, we have life. And friends, tomorrow morning, that is going to make a difference. Are you a mum, perhaps? And your job means that every achievement seems to be undone by the end of the day. But do you know Jesus? Well, he's not looking for your achievements. He wants you to get to know him even more deeply. That's where you'll find life. Or perhaps you're just starting out into adulthood. Life looks promising. Maybe careers are opening up. Well, the banks approve that loan. So many around you will tell you how to find life. Hard work means bumper crops or maybe your name's attached to something significant, whatever it might be. Our culture will tell you that, but they'd be wrong. Please don't miss the point of life, your life. If you're looking for life somewhere other than Jesus, your life will be wasted no matter how hard you work. But if your life is about knowing Jesus, that is success. Or perhaps you could list your life achievements on a post-it note. But do you know Jesus? Well, you haven't missed out on life at all. You have life and nothing can take that away from you, here and into eternity. Maybe you drag yourself off to the job that you can't even remember why you accepted. Take courage. If you know Jesus, he says, my dear one, you have already found the meaning of life, the purpose of life, both here and into eternity. Perhaps you're reaching the end of your life and your relationships are in a shambles. Estranged friends, estranged family. Perhaps you're saying to yourself, I spent so much time trying to achieve and not enough time getting to know those people who are most important. Even then you can now take heart. See, it's not too late to get to know the one who can give you life deep and joyful. There are so many ways you may have missed out on life. Well, there are so many ways that maybe the world around you telling, is telling you you've had a successful life. Maybe you've missed out. Maybe it's been a success. Don't miss out on the life to come. Make sure that your success does not blind you to what life is really for. Friends, what I love about Jesus is this, that he is God in Jesus I can know God and have life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us your only dear Son, God himself in the flesh. We thank you that in him we can have life. In him only can we have life. 
and the life you have given us to us to us in him to know him to know you is deep is joyful is forever is purposeful has meaning we were made for this life to know you may you apply this wonderful truth to our heart by your holy spirit we pray in jesus name amen